in the mountains. And the latest computer models from our news partner, Cairo 7 TV, show that there is a chance for snow on Sunday into the evening, but not much for Monday at this point. Next week, it will be very cold with high temperatures below freezing. Right now, it is cloudy and 41 degrees in downtown Seattle. I'm Ursula Royteen. Subscribe to us on YouTube for our Can't Miss Clips. Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. News and talk powered by the Pacific Northwest. The fastest 15. It's brought to you by IRG Physical and Hand Therapy. They allow us to bring this to you commercial free. This is our number two. two, 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 two. It's time for the fastest 15 minutes in the news. This is Dory's Fastest 15. It is a world of news and a tidy little 15-minute package just for you. Welcome to our Fastest 15. So Monday, the high is 32, and there's a 40% chance of precip, I'm saying. So less than 50-50. And then only 20% the next day when it's going to be even colder. Yeah. Oh, I think it. It, uh, so Morgan Palmer said we have a chance of seeing the coldest temperatures in a decade next week That'll but not fun. as much yeah so not as much snow so not big snow dang it <laughs> no and i did use the word big snow and um it, it's not as big yeah oh, well. maybe not even much oh well i gotta take my christmas tree down i, was, I, I, haven't, was, I haven't done that either i was gonna save it for the snow but <laughs> but i gotta take are it your down. lights gonna stay up for a while they're still up yeah yeah why can't we just Although it's not great for the environment, but why can't we just leave them up? Like, oh, it's not that. I've got the LED lights. Okay, so why not just leave it up? I because, feel like it's just so because it dilutes the specialness ah, of Christmas. Okay, that's I mean that's my argument for eventually taking everything down because then I, I next yeah. next Thanksgiving Day yeah. when it all goes up, I'll be all happy again. The, this light rail story, the Sound Transit story. Has I, there, I chuckled. Has there been a story that reveals how this region has lost its mind than to say that it's sexist for Sound Transit to switch from a female to a male voice on their announcements at the stations? Look, I hate Sound Transit with a fiery passion. But to criticize them of sexism... but. Let well, me some people just thought that the, the woman's voice was just more pleasant. Here's, here's and, and the woman's voice. <laughs> Next stop, Pioneer Square Station. Transfer using doors to my right to continue your trip. Yeah, it's a very soft voice. Mm -hmm. It's not that authoritative. And here's their new male voice. Riders traveling towards University of Washington must change trains at Pioneer Square Station. That cuts through the ambiance and, or the ambient sound, I should say. And, and if you want people to hear announcements, the male voice is easier to hear. But I'm telling you, I, I watched these news stories about this, and... I know there were a few complaints. I, I added it just for a chuckle. Uh, but listen to these. Listen to how ridiculous some people are about this. Cairo 7, our news partners, they were out there. I did notice that, right. It's a guy now voice from a woman, so I mean... I don't think it's sexist, but I don't know. I think it's silly that they changed it in the first place. Okay. One person didn't want change. Dee Dee Sun read some of the mean tweets. People online, a bit more outspoken. This tweet calls it that new monstrous voice and begs, please, for the love of God, make it stop. This asks Sound Transit, is it possible to turn them off? Another says, at Sound Transit, sexist much? And this request, can you turn that S down or go back to the nice lady? Sexist much? Who, who writes stuff like that? But here's the larger issue. It is this male bad, female good. And that's a bunch of crap. Women are wonderful. Men are wonderful. We have different attributes. We have this push to feminize all men, to masculinize all women. It sucks. It's not good for kids. It's not good for society to do this. We each have different attributes. Men have stuff encoded in our DNA that makes us want to go to Costco. Women have stuff encoded <laughs> in their DNA that makes them nest when they're about to have a kid. 
And we're different. We're biologically different. We are emotionally different. And this neutering of everybody, but it's just the knee-jerk. Men, bad. Women, wonderful. No, they're all wonderful in their own way. Individuals, some individuals are bad. Some individuals are fantastic and even better than most. But, but this for some, maybe the woman's voice, yeah, and I I hate generalizations, but the woman's voice maybe just was more pleasant. At least Sound Transit did turn down the volume. The, but the <laughs> woman's voice doesn't cut through the ambient sound. Well, yeah, it, and that wasn't the whole point. I mean, we have cuts from the woman, the spokesperson, explaining yeah. why they did it. And yeah. they, yeah, it's yeah, because there's changing. changes right now. There yeah. she is. The decision was made to change the voice of the announcements, um, basically just to get people's attention. Okay, yeah, something new that perks up your ears. Whenever we can, we will, you know, address those complaints. But um, I think for now, the, the announcements will stay. And what she meant by that was on the volume. So if they say it's too loud, then they'll try to adjust if, they, yeah. if people think it's too loud. Just anybody who goes on Twitter or anywhere else and says that because they changed from a female to a male announcer somehow is sexism that's just one of the stupidest things i've ever heard and uh but but again it's it's all about this overall thing where guy men can't be portrayed positively in in media and they always have to be the butt of the family jokes and and then you have a show like last man standing where the dad's actually pretty cool and pretty funny and pretty smart and that show succeeds wildly after decades of the guy always has to be the the well, buffoon in his in previous the show, Tim Allen, in his previous show, he was the buffoon. <laughs> was he? I never saw that one. Home Improvement? No, I never saw it. But what? I love this new one. Oh, but he was a buffoon. New one. It's been on for like eight, mm-hmm. eight years. Okay, next up in the Fastest 15, got the Seahawks coming up. Love to, uh, oh, you know, we had just had Pete Carroll on the last half hour. Mm-hmm. I would encourage everybody to go read a long profile of Pete Carroll that is in this morning's New York Times. Pete Carroll wants to change your life. And it talks about the things that have made him so successful as the Seahawks coach that he and his business partner, partner Michael Gervais, who's um, like a performance psychology mm-hmm. expert. We had Michael on a, a couple of months ago on this show. But uh, Pete and Michael Gervais, they started working with Microsoft, and now they, they just work with individuals on trying to help people achieve the same level of maximum potential that, that that they try to get out. I I've always been fascinated with that whole field. But uh, is this new or is this different from what he was doing down in Southern California? It's it is very new okay. or very new and different. Yeah. He started. Uh, Paul Allen asked him to talk to Microsoft executives, and then the the new CEO of Microsoft wanted him to meet with the twelve people who respond directly to the CEO. And now they have it available to all their workers. And it's just about peak performance. But anyway, it's a great New York Times story that uh, ran this morning. And it's it's worth your time if you can get past the paywall at the New York Times. And also, because it's Blue Friday, we are asking you to go to mynorthwest.com slash win and submit a Blue Friday photo of yourself in Seahawks gear For a chance to win a Seahawks Pro Shop gift card, thanks to our friends at the Seahawks Pro Shop. They want to get you ready for the Seahawks playoffs matchup this weekend. Details and rules for our Blue Friday photo contest at mynorthwest.com slash win. Okay, next up in the fastest 15. So uh, we, we had a big surprise right at the very end of the show yesterday. Adam Smith. Congressman, he was on CNN uh, yesterday morning, and he said it's time for Pelosi to send the articles of impeachment to the Senate. A lot of Democrats have been saying that. It's just she's been playing games. And she's also been trying to use it to kind of leverage a different result out of the Senate. And Adam Smith on CNN also said that, uh, no, the House shouldn't impact the Senate, and the Senate shouldn't impact the House. They're supposed to be different. Is it time, Chairman? I think it is. I mean, I understand what the speaker is trying to do, um, basically trying to use the leverage of that to work with Democratic and Republican senators to try to get a reasonable trial, a trial that would actually you know, show evidence, bring out witnesses. But at the end of the day, just like we, we control it in the House, Mitch McConnell controls it in the Senate. 
Um, I don't. I think it was perfectly um, advisable. For right there, you said we control what happens in the House. Mitch McConnell controls the Senate. We don't control each other. The Speaker to try to leverage that to get a better deal. At this point, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. And yes, I, I think it is time to send um, the impeachment to the Senate and let Mitch McConnell be responsible uh, for the fairness of the trial. He ultimately is. Okay, so uh, uh, an hour later, Adam Smith sent out a tweet that said, I misspoke this morning. I do believe we should do everything we can to try to force the Senate to have a fair trial. If the Speaker believes that holding on to the articles for a longer time will help force a fair trial in the Senate, then I wholeheartedly support that decision. And I was you know, pretty hard on the congressman mm-hmm. because I said that sounds pretty feckless. Mm-hmm. He says something on CNN clearly, unequivocally. An hour later, he tweets something that's seemingly 180 degrees different. And, and anyway... He called into the show right at the end, right before we went I off the I love the fact that, and you talked about that yesterday, that he is willing too. to take the, the, the fire yes. if there's going to be fire. I wish every politician would do this, and it was, a, it was a good conversation. But having just played what he said on CNN and read his tweet an hour later, does this explanation make sense? You essentially said the, the House shouldn't control the Senate, the Senate shouldn't control the House, it's time. And I said two things. I said, first of all, I, I think it's perfectly appropriate that the Speaker has held these up to try to force um, McConnell to have a fair process. Yes. I said, I think that the appropriate thing to do. I think we've reached the point where it's obvious that that's not going to happen, and it's probably time to send those articles over. Then I got a bunch of calls from a bunch of constituents saying, you know, why are you not supporting Nancy? Why are you not supporting the process? I said, whoa, hey, wow. no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying. Okay, and- I, I don't believe that. I don't think he changed his mind because he got calls from constituents. Uh, like everyone else, I think that House leadership called him on the floor for this. And but he flat out said Nancy Pelosi did not call him. He did not get a call. He, she might not have. Oh, but so, you're, somebody, you're thinking somebody that was, called him. Somebody in leadership. Yeah. Yeah, and I just, I just didn't buy this. And it's really a question of timing. I don't question the strategy. We've tried it. We're probably getting to the point where we need to send them over. And the thing that I said in answer to the question that, in retrospect, didn't accurately reflect my opinion was I didn't mean we have to send them over. And that's odd. What I said didn't accurately reflect my opinion. He's been a congressman for 22 years. I think he knows how to say things that accurately reflect his opinion. But when he said, uh, I misspoke, uh, I think we... If the speaker believes holding on to the articles for a longer time will help force a trial, fair trial in the Senate, then I support that decision. Uh, that, none of that makes any sense to me. But uh, You know what's happened today? No. Well, Nancy Pelosi says the House will take steps next week and uh, will she, send yes. articles of impeachment. Yeah. yeah, she's going to send them over next yeah. week. Yeah. And, but everybody knows that it's not going to go anywhere in the Senate. It's going to die. and. And it's all going to be over and done with, and it's going to be just another, another, you know, like the Russia thing, like everything else. It's just been a huge distraction that got people all tingly because they hate Trump, and it's nothing. It turns out to be absolutely nothing. By the way, we got a lot of good press here. Foxnews.com, we're getting national press. There you this. go. Yeah, how about that? Uh, where's my quote? He has no courage of his convictions, and he had to deny his own words an hour later, said Dory Monson. And then they have a quote from Adam Smith from when he called in to us. So we're making big national news here. That's yeah. what I'm trying to tell you. Which is great. Oh, it's awesome. Couldn't be better. Up next in the Fastest 15, uh, I'm trying to, I, I did a search to see during 2016 when Donald Trump was running for president. The first time, if uh, the media did any stories like this about Donald Trump, I couldn't find any. I uh, had this CBS News. That's our network. Mm. You know, okay. you know how I love our network here. I okay. love them. Headline: Elizabeth Warren never washes her face, <laughs> and other 2020 skincare routine. From CBS News. Um, that was also on The Independent, House Post. Oh, yeah. Was, wasn't it initially everywhere. from Cosmo? It was from Cosmo. 
Yeah. Okay, that would explain. Elizabeth Warren shocked the internet Thursday when it was revealed that she does not wash her face. The Massachusetts senator known for her flawless... <laughs> I didn't know she was known for... You're bad. <laughs> I, didn't, I'm not gonna, I'm, I didn't notice her flawless skin, but... What did she's known for? No, she's known for faking being a Native American so that she could move up in academia. That's what she's known for. But let me get back to CBS News because these are the big boys. These are the network people here. So uh, far be it for me to question them. Uh, the Massachusetts senator, known for her flawless complexion, shared a skincare secret that many who have followed her have been wondering about. Ponds moisturizer. <laughs> Good old ponds. <laughs> Tried and true. Did they, did they do any fluff stories like that about Trump? I couldn't find uh, any. Yes, actually. Did I they? did find some. Okay, what? Uh, this is actually on NPR. Uh, what? Donald Trump's hair care secrets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to know a couple? Yeah, I do. He washes with head and shoulders. Okay. He doesn't dry it, though, because that would dry his scalp out. Okay. Uh, takes about an hour. Then he reads the paper, watches TV, you know, <laughs> loves Fox, Morning Joe, yeah. Today Show. Yep. And then he says, uh, and then I comb my hair. Yes, I do use a comb. Do I comb it forward? No, I don't comb it forward. I actually don't have a bad hairline. When you think about it, it's not bad. I mean, I get a lot of credit for comb overs, uh, comb overs, but it's not really one. Anyway, yeah, it's a comb over. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad <laughs> so comb over. That was, that was NPR. Yeah, you know, they ended up asking all of the candidates about their skincare, and Bernie Sanders. They said his routine. He said is quote not much. Asked whether that he moisturizes. He says I put something on. I got something. The doctor gave it to gave me something years ago. I put it on. I'm not quite sure. Like I, I want to know. That's a helpful do they use yeah. Do they use old-fashioned toothbrushes or Sonicare? I know. I know. We need to know. Come on, oh. get on it, CBS. You know I can't wait till you cover the conventions. You're going to be doing those sidebar stories, trying to come up with interesting things. To... I know, but I'm if a talk show Trump... host. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not this a journalist. This is from Cosmo. Uh, but if we Cosmo get Trump on again. CBS News rewrote it for their website. We're doing that what? question. If we get Trump on again, we're doing that question. That'll go Skincare? viral. Yeah. No, Ooh. no, the toothbrush. Okay. Skincare's been done. Okay. <laughs> Finally, I just love this. Uh, a couple nights ago when those missiles were flying at the military bases. You know who Dick Vitale is? Uh -huh. College basketball analyst. Sure. Everybody loves Dick E. V. I mean, he's impossible not to love. He's just so full of passion. And uh, <laughs> this is just one of the funniest tweets I've ever read in my life. This is what he sent that night. Like many, I've been following the news involving the attacks on al-Assad bases by Iraq and Iran. Also, I've been checking hoop news, and four teams should get a tip of the hat. Rutgers, Providence, Maryland, Boston College, the NWs tonight, baby! <laughs> Quite the segue. I just love it. I just absolutely love that tweet. And that is your fastest 50. This has been the fastest 15 minutes in the news. Fast, 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 fast. Dory's fastest 15. Seattle talk show host known for his flawless complexion. You know, you know what my skincare uh, technique is? I use that um, all-in-one, it's a shampoo and body wash. <laughs> like suave? Yeah. Yeah, suave. It is suave, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Put about a quarter of that in my hand. I get my hair all foamy. And then I uh, uh, use the foam to wash the rest of my body. It's very efficient. It's mm -hmm. unbelievably efficient. And I'm springtime fresh. Okay, we've got lots more to do. What are we doing next here, Nicole? We're going to do the... Should we do some fun? Let's do it. Do some I'm fun. In. I want to do some fun on a Friday. Okay, stick around. You'll find out. The Cairo Radio Text Line is brought to you.